Hello and welcome to Unstitches. On a roll with older industrial machines at the moment, but I thought this one was a little bit more interesting than your standard industrial plane sewing machine. Uh, this is the Juki DDW9A. It's a pretty bog standard plane sewer, except for one thing. And if you're familiar with plane sewers, you might even recognize what the difference is here. This area here looks quite different to a standard sewing machine. You'll see there's no take up lever here. So if we have a look at a standard sort of setup for a, a sewing machine, and this is not an industrial machine, but it definitely shows the uh, different configuration here. So if we take a look at this little featherweight, and if I turn the machine over, you'll see the take up lever here turns, it goes up and down here. Not quite in unison with the needle bar, you'll notice. So you'll notice here when the needle bar is coming up to top dead centre, that the take up lever is coming up still to its top dead centre position. And if I keep turning, just as the take-up lever starts to come up near the top of its travel, you'll notice that the needle bar is still moving down. Okay, so the needle bar is on its way down to form the next stitch. And when I bring the needle bar to its lowest position here, you'll see that the take-up lever is still on its way down as the needle bar starts to rise there. And the reason for the take-up is that it allows slack in the system basically for the thread to come around the hook and then when the threads come around the hook and is ready to be pulled up the take up lever pulls the thread up to form the stitch. If we have a look at this machine here there's no take up lever sticking out the front of the machine there and that's because this is a rotary take up and the reason that they went to rotary take up was I think mainly for speed and I'm not 100% sure why they didn't maintain the rotary take up because it seems to me like an efficient system. It allows the machine to run faster, I would assume, and also less vibration because you don't have that lever, uh, you know, coming up and down at, you know, potentially thousands, well, yeah, definitely thousands of stitches per minute. You know, it's going to create a little bit of inertia there and. Uh, some vibration. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure whether the, the system here was not uh, that reliable. I don't quite know, but um, you certainly don't see many of the rotary take-up machines anymore. But I thought I'd uh, maybe show you how the rotary take-up system's working and compare it with the more traditional type take-up mechanism. If we take a look at the threading on this machine, it's pretty straightforward. You'll also notice that the tensioner is on the side on the faceplate here, not at the front here. So we've got this guide here which is normally you'd find on the front of the machine, probably up in this area here somewhere. But this one is here and we bring the thread down this uh, there's a little indentation here. You can see where the thread path is there. So we come around the tensioner there in between the discs. Yeah, sorry about the state of this machine. It's quite dirty and, uh, you know, I'm in the process of servicing this machine for a customer and I thought I'd show you this. But, um, you know, industrial machines uh, do get quite dirty. Uh, anyway, over the take up uh, the check spring there. In fact, that may need a little bit of adjusting. And then under this guide here. And let's see. Oh no, that check spring's working fine. It's just dipping down a little bit there. And then we head through this guide here. And then around through the take-up slot here. Now there's two take-up slots here. I'll get you a front view here. So if I just come from that thread guide now, I'll thread it through the right hand slot there, and then through this guide here, and then back over 
and down the left slot there and that's our take up so if I turn this in operating direction you'll see there are little guides here just that the thread lays over here and as I turn the machine you'll see its action there it's a bit hard to see from this angle um, but I'll get you a side on view we'll take a cover off see if we can get a better view side on and then if we swing the machine around oh she's a heavy beast I'll get you a, uh, a view of the rest of the threading there and it's really just a matter of coming down uh, through that guide there and down to the needle guide there and then just you know standard threading left to right there through the needle like so and we're ready to ready to sew now of course this machine head would normally be in a table I've just pulled it out of the table so that I can get on the bench and show you guys this uh, it's a bit easier with my camera set up here now if I do some stitching here I'll just do it by hand you'll be able to generally see the workings of this here I'll try and take the plate off and see whether we can still actually form a stitch with that plate off so you can see it more clearly but at least just here we'll get to see the motion of the take up there okay let's see if I can take this off this cover might actually be holding some of the working parts I'm not 100% sure Okay, yeah, actually there is just on this uh, inside of this cover here, there's a little cutter there. That's just to cut the thread if there is any sort of tangling going on there. If for whatever reason the thread gets tangled around the take up mechanism, this little cutter is there to clear that thread there. Let's clear that thread off there. And here we have. A slightly better view but you can see where the guides are attached the internal guides and in behind this ring here and as I turn the machine you get a little bit of an idea of the thread path it's coming up here right it's going across this guide here over around here and back to you know where these guides are here and then it's coming uh, straight down here down to the needle it's quite an ingenious mechanism actually it's obviously works pretty well okay Now I'll see if I can get you a view of this in unison with the actual thread going around the hook here. Okay, just try my best to get the take up mechanism and the hook in shot here. You can see the how the mechanism works here. So you've got the needle coming up and the material feeding, needles coming down. And if we come right to bottom dead center there, and then we wait for a little bit of needle rise there, the hook will pick up the thread. And you can see that the thread is coming around the tensioner up here, coming right up here and down, right? So as the hook picks up the thread, the thread, top thread, is going to come around the hook, so there needs to be slack created in the system, and that's what this take up here does. So you'll see there's the hook has picked up the top thread, and now slack is being provided here to a certain point. And then once the 
thread here, which you can see, hopefully you can see this, thread has come around, it's just coming around here, uh, you know, hook is traveling in an anti-clockwise direction here, and so the thread is nearly at the six o'clock position there. That's six o'clock position there, and as the thread comes around here, the thread needs to be pulled up and you know up through the system here and that's what the take up also does here. We'll see that starting to happen here. So the thread is being pulled up. So you can see that the thread's being pulled up from this section here. And there we have a full rotation and it just carries on like so. Pretty ingenious. Let's compare that with the traditional method. Okay, I'll try and get you a, a, a view of this uh, traditional take-up system here. This is my featherweight machine and hopefully we'll be able to see the thread coming around the hook and the relationship with the take-up mechanism as well. So at this stage we have the take-up lever at its top of its travel which you know generally you should always start your seam with the take-up lever at the top of its travel. Uh, the reason for that is because if you have your uh, take-up lever not quite at the top of its travel when you start a seam the first thing that the take-up lever is going to do is it's going to go up to the top dead center there and it's going to pull the thread and if you've got a short tail on your thread just coming out of your needle it'll pull that tail out of the needle and de-thread your needle and so that's why we always start a seam with your take-up lever at the top of its travel there. Okay now so we'll see the needles coming down here so we're watching just here with the needle and you'll see the hook is actually turning in clockwise direction on this machine and needles bottom dead center take up levers coming down uh, we get a little bit of needle rise the hook will pick up the thread from the needle there take up lever you'll see is still coming down and the thread you'll see come around the hook around the bobbin case just here so the needle the take up lever is coming down and providing extra thread to come around this hook here just there but there's the six o'clock position there and you'll notice that the take up lever is starting on its upward travel and that's pulling this loop this big loop here coming right around this bobbin case it's pulling that back up to pull up the stitch on the fabric there right there take up levers right at the top of its travel and that pulls the thread up and forms the stitch and pulls the stitch up nice and uh, tight on the bottom side of the fabric now if you've ever seen loops on the bottom side of your fabric which I'm sure a lot of people have it's a very common issue uh, that's because what's happening is the top thread is not being pulled up uh, securely and what's happening is when the take-up lever is coming up and pulling this thread up from around the, um, the bobbin case here uh, instead of the so if the tension's too light or if the machine's not threaded correctly or you know the, the thread's not between the tension discs or something like that there's not enough tension uh, when the take-up lever goes to pull the thread from around the bobbin and the hook area here so instead of pulling tightly up against the bottom of the fabric it just lets more thread through because it's too loose and that's why you end up with the loops is because that uh, this piece here hasn't been pulled tight it's allowed slack to come through this side here just perfectly timed 
to do the job. I love how this mechanism works on these traditional take-up machines. Uh, it, it's driven by the uh, main shaft, top shaft here. So you, you can see the top shaft there just at the end of my finger there. And then it drives this here around. You can see it coming around. You know, you've got this counterbalance over this side here. It comes around. And then, you know, that's driving your needle bar, right, up and down. That's just a standard crank mechanism. But you can see we've got this little uh, piece here that's slightly offset from the center line of the needle bar drive crank. And it's driving, you can see it here, it's driving this crank here, which is connected to the take-up lever here and also to this pivot point at the back here. It's just an ingenious mechanism. And, you know, the engineering involved in working out this whole system here to give you the amount of travel required, you know, the timing, uh, the elliptical shape that it's drawing here. You can see that the take-up lever is, you know, kind of running in an ellipse really well probably technically may not be called an ellipse but you know it's definitely got a an elliptical type travel there and just the whole how the whole linkage works you know together to give you that and it's been especially designed yeah Pretty neat. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that interesting little take-up mechanism there, the rotary take-up on this uh, beast of a Juki here. Uh, they look quite crusty at times, some of these industrial machines, but, you know, I mean, that's just tape someone's put on, on the machine there to probably cover a gap between the machine head and the table. You know, but if you look through underneath all the dirt and grime and whatnot with these industrial machines, they're still good solid machines, work perfectly fine generally, you know, if they haven't been sort of messed around with or neglected too much. Yeah, I thought that made an interesting little subject there on just the variation on a take up there. Thank you as always to my patrons and thank you very much for watching.